Okay, I have an original effect to share with you today. It involves uh, 16 cards. And as you can see, I have a good selection of card values, suits, and colors on the table here. Now, since we have both have seen the cards, why don't we give them a mix? Um, one great way to mix cards is to use something called the Mange Shuffle. And it comes in two varieties, the Over Under and the Under Over. Which of those two would you like? under over. Okay, so let me show you how that works. You push the top card into your other hand and then you next one goes under then over. Under over under over under over under over under over under over under. Okay. So that is a mange under over. Okay? And now we need um eight car two piles of eight one two three four so i'll go ahead and just deal out uh, the top eight cards into one pile now i really need your help in thoroughly mixing these cards because it's very important that you know that these cards cannot be known by anyone as to where they are the order of the cards and their placement within these packets okay so maybe i'll move this one down here so why don't we begin to mix why don't i i'll do that into a two piles that's always a classic way to mix cards with random stacking decided by you you want left on right Okay. Would you like to do another one of those? You would. Okay. Right on left this time. That's fine. Should we do a third? Yes. Okay. Your choice. A left on right. Okay. A note to you as the performer, you can do as many of these left right shuffles with random stacking as you like or as the spectator calls for. You truly, truly can. Uh, why don't we deal out into four piles? Uh, since we have eight cards here, four divides into eight, so we get kind of nice equal piles here. Would you like these piles stacked from left to right or right to left? Left to right? Okay. Uh, we can even do something called leap frog stacking if you're interested in that um, and we can do that in either direction as well you'd like leapfrog from right to left okay so how that works this one leaps over its neighbor lands there this one leaps over its neighbor lands there how would you like these stacked left on right okay and then why don't we do one more exotic shuffle so something like the klondike or mange or pharaoh or even a down under Okay. Do any of those sound of interest to you? The Klondike. Okay. So this is the Klondike shuffle. You take the top and bottom cards off as one until you set all the cards on the table. Okay. Would you like to do any more like left, right into two or four piles? Just one more into two piles. How would you like these stacked? Right on left. Okay. I think you would have to agree that we have mixed that packet quite thoroughly okay now for the second half um, we can begin the same if you like or begin differently I suppose but how would you like the pile stack this time right on left okay uh, would you like to do any more of those no how about four like to do one of those okay okay so how would you like these stacked oh you want left or right leapfrog you must have heard Good things about the leapfrog stacking or something. How would like these stacked? Left on right. Okay. And once again, a note to you as the performer, you can perform as many left right shuffles with random stacking or dealing out into four piles as the spectator calls for. You truly, truly can. Okay. And then should we do another quote exotic shuffle? In fact, let me just show you. This is for you as the performer. Um, here are just a few. Let me move this over here now. Uh, here are a few, quote, permissible shuffles for, th this is technically a Bessie sequence at this stage. You'll see that in the tutorial. So we've been doing left, right, and then into four piles. We've done a Klondike. We could do a Mange, a Pharaoh, or a Down Under, okay, and others. But I thought I would just give you some options for some of the more unusual shuffles. Would you like a Pharaoh? Pharaoh shuffle. Okay, kind of a fun one. So you just spread out the cards, break the cards exactly in half, and then you just perfectly interlace the cards. Now one interlacing is a pharaoh in, and the other one's a pharaoh out, but either one's just fine. Did you want to do any more into two piles, four piles, or one of these other 
unusual shuffles. Like to do a down under. Okay, that's fine. Down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Okay, I think you would have to agree that no one could have known ahead of time exactly which shuffles we would perform with you sounding in on which ones we performed, the quantity of those shuffles, and the stacking order, all of which affect the organization of these two packets of eight cards. Okay, so now what we're going to do for each of these, we're going to deal them out into two piles of four. Now I can just do left, right, left, right, and arrive at two piles of four that way, or I can just deal down one, two, three, four, and drop the remaining cards as a second pile. What would you like for this one? Just deal out the top four. Okay, that's fine. What about this one here? Left, right, it's kind of standard dealing. Okay, so we have two piles of four down there as well. And we're almost finished here. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to actually take each pile of four and either deal it down, one, two, set aside the other pair, or left, right. We're going to create pairs of cards now. So what would you like? Just down. Okay, there we go. What about over here? Left, right. Okay, that's fine. Either one's your choice. Left, right again. Okay, that's fine. And what about here? Just deal down, one, two, leave the other two as its own pair. Okay, so here is the final extremely important series of free choices you will be given that will completely decide the success or failure of all of this. So what I need you to do is maybe uh, focus on, let's say, the bottom four, and you're free to stack these pairs on top of any of the pairs there. Now we want uh, piles of four when we're done. So like this one, would you like it on one, two, three, or four? What would you like it? Three? Okay, what about this one? One? Okay, what about this one? Four? And then this fourth one here, we go on the second one. Okay, well, let's just see where all of your choices have brought us here. Okay, so here's one little pair. Uh, there's a pair. I don't know if you see anything interesting or not. Um, another pair. Okay, and then another pair. Yeah, I'm going to twist my arm trying to make it symmetric here. Okay. Uh, well, do you see anything interesting? Well, if you don't, I actually have a written prediction right over here. So let's just bring that out. Uh, just in case you think maybe this is chance, or you maybe don't quite see what's the big deal here. Okay, you will create four piles. Well, we have four piles, each consisting of one club, one heart, one spade, and one diamond. Ah, let's see. A club, heart, spade, diamond. Club, heart, Spade, diamond, club, heart, spade, diamond. They're even in different orders. Isn't that crazy? Club, heart, spade, diamond. Oh, I don't know how you were able to make this perfect sequence of choices along the way that would lead to a perfect confirmation of a prediction that was written before this routine even began. Wow, you are a great choice maker. Amazing. Okay, well, is the person a great choice maker? Well, maybe, but um, it's the power of Bessie's sequences of order eight that make all of this work. Okay, so let me quickly show you um, how to do it. Um, I will add links in the description below to Bessie's sequences and quasi Bessie sequences so that you can learn, okay, what are these special arrangements of cards that will allow you to mix them in countless ways and not undermine the organization of the cards so that you can pull off mind-blowing, eye-popping card magic. Okay, so what did I do before I even started? Of course, I had a, car, a packet of cards spread out, but let me show you how uh, things were set up and it's it's easy to do so I'm, I'm just going to put club heart spade diamond so for now we'll just kind of put them um, according to suit that's probably the fastest way 
uh, for the setup, okay? There we go, four of each. Okay, so what I did was I just took the clubs and the hearts, randomly stacked those as packets, as fours. Same thing here, okay? Now I converted this to a Bessie sequence of order eight. And a slick way of doing this, thanks to Werner Miller, one of my subscribers, is to deal them out into three piles and then pick up the first pile dealt out, the first card was dealt out there, and then pick them up in opposite order, okay? So this will create a Bessie sequence of order eight relative to clubs and hearts, okay? So you can see club, two hearts, a club, and then a heart, two clubs, and a heart. Okay, so that's a Bessie sequence uh, of order eight. So these are, this is the arrangement of cards that can be put through tremendous mixing and not be harmed, okay? Where you still retain a tremendous amount of information. Uh, here it's a Bessie sequence relative to spades and diamonds. So we have spade, a couple of diamonds, spade, and then a diamond, two spades and a diamond, okay? So what I did then is just, I randomly stacked these. Okay, so this is still the preparation, but honestly, it only takes a couple of minutes to do this. Now, what I could have done, if you'd like to, you could start here. You could just display this. And if you display it quickly enough, I don't know if any spectator is going to notice anything interesting here. Now, one thing that they could notice that's kind of suspect is the fact that we have spades and diamonds over here, clubs and hearts over here, okay? So if you don't think the spectator is going to notice that, you can immediately go into the routine from here and skip the mange shuffle that I performed when I began the routine, when I began to show you the routine. Well, I decided to hide this with one little step. So what I decided to do, this is still preparation, I just quickly performed one Klondike shuffle. And so what that will do is scramble the cards quite a bit where the clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds are like all over the place. And it's going to be um, harder for the spectator to see kind of, is there anything like suspect going on here? And even this one, you may not want to show it for a long time. And I didn't, I just kind of showed it and said, hey, we have 16 cards of various values, suits and colors. So have them kind of focus on the face cards and they're mixed in with the number cards, okay? So this is the kind of packet I started with. Well, since I performed the Klondike Shuffle, I want to get back to the packet that had two Bessie sequences that were stacked on top of each other. Well, the mathematical inverse to the Klondike is a Mange Shuffle. Now, technically, you can do an under, over, or an over, under. Either one works. One reverses the order of the cards, which won't hurt anything, and the other one brings it back to the order it was before that Klondike shuffle was performed during the prep stage, okay? So this is how I began. I said, okay, well, uh, maybe to mix the cards, why don't we do a, a mange over under or under over your choice? And maybe it'll say over under this time. Okay, that, that's fine. It won't harm anything. It just reverses the order of the cards from what they were after stacking those two Bessie sequence packets together, okay? Let me just even show you that really quickly here. So two hearts, two clubs, two clubs, two hearts, there's a Bessie sequence, two diamonds, two spades, two spades, two diamonds. Okay, so it's a concatenation of two Bessie sequences, one relative to clubs and hearts, the other one relative to spades and diamonds. Okay, and then from there, I just dealt out the top eight cards, which will just be the top uh, Bessie sequence of order eight. Okay, that's, I think that's eight. <laughs> I'm keeping track. Uh, I think it is. So eight cards there, eight cards here. So these individually are just little Bessie sequences of order eight relative to either clubs and hearts, as the case here, or spades and diamonds. Now, once it's in that organization, you can put these packets through hundreds of unique mixing routines and sequences and not harm these. That, that's the amazing thing. Okay, so I took one and then I said, well, let's, 
let's mix these beyond the knowledge of anyone. How would you like these stacked? And so the spectator is sounding in here. I mean, they, they are influencing how these cards are being mixed. Maybe they want left and right. And you can do as many of those as you like. Uh, we can deal out into four. That would be fine. Random stacking from left to right, right to left, or leapfrog. So we can do leapfrog. Okay. And then I allowed you to do one more, quote, exotic shuffle. So Klondike, Mange, Pharaoh, or um, Down Under. Okay, just for fun. And so maybe they'll want uh, Mange over under. That's just fine. Okay. And so forth. Okay, so we'll maybe I'll just minimally mix this one so you're not here forever. Okay, but we can do more mixing as I showed you. Okay, and so once you have these two packets, all I did was I gave you the choice. I could deal down four, set the other four as a second pile of four, or do a left right dealing to get two piles of four. So maybe we'll go left right there and then just go down here. It doesn't matter. Okay, now technically these now are quasi Bessie sequences of order four. That's what those are. And so what they will look like is they will either have here two diamonds and then two spades in the middle, or over here two spades on the outside, two diamonds in the middle. Okay, so both of these are technically quasi Bessie sequences of order four, which is talked about in the series that I'll link in the description below. But what's really nice is whether you deal down or this left or right, what you will be doing is creating pairs of cards, and maybe we'll deal down there, pairs of cards here that have exactly one club and one heart. See that? And the ones down here will have exactly one diamond and one spade. Okay, so the spectator's free to stack these wherever they want, creating piles of four. And what that will guarantee is that each of these will have one of the four suits. Okay, and that's what we showed you. Okay, so I don't even know if you need a written prediction. You could just state it before you turn them over and say, Wow, it's amazing. These down-facing piles of four cards, they all feel like they're like the same in some way. How could they be the same? And then you can reveal, oh, it's because they have one of each suit. Isn't that amazing? How did we do that given all of the random choices that you made as the spectator? Okay. So anyway, this is a wonderful example of the power of Bessie sequences and mathematical card magic that enables you to mix certain structures so thoroughly that it would allay all suspicions that the cards are arranged in some special way. A more technical description of, of that fact is the fact that Bessie sequences are invariant, unharmed by a whole host of common systematic mixing procedures we use today. So you'll learn that if you take a look at the videos in the series link below. So thank you for watching and Take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.